This slide shows a general outline of the flow of the lab this week. First, you'll do a preliminary spectrophotometry experiment to become familiar with the use of the spectrophotometer. And in that experiment, you'll plot the absorption spectrum for a solution and determine the lambda max for that solution. The objective of the main experiment in the lab is to construct an oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve and to predict the effects of different experimental conditions on the affinity of binding between oxygen and hemoglobin, and therefore to predict how those conditions will shift the curve. And again, keep in mind that those experimental treatments are going to be reflective of in vivo physiologic changes. And finally, to test your predictions and to construct your curves, you'll use a spectrophotometry method. And on the next slide, we'll talk about how and why we can use spectrophotometry to quantify oxygen hemoglobin binding. First, we need to look at a portion of the absorption spectrum for deoxygenated hemoglobin, which is shown here in blue, and compare that with the absorption spectrum for oxygenated hemoglobin, which is shown here in red. Now remember back in the spectrophotometry tutorial, one of the experimental tips for the curve experiment in this lab was to use a wavelength of 660 nanometers on the spectrophotometer. Now take a look at the 660 nanometer wavelength here on this absorption spectrum. What you can see is that the deoxygenated hemoglobin here in blue absorbs more light at 660 nanometers than does the oxygenated hemoglobin shown here in red. Now, I want to note that 660 is not the lambda max for either form of hemoglobin. Rather, we're choosing to use this specific wavelength in the oxygen hemoglobin binding experiment because of the differential absorbance of oxygenated and deoxygenated forms of hemoglobin at 660. And we'll use this difference in absorbance to determine what percentage of hemoglobin in a sample is oxygenated. In other words, the percent saturation of hemoglobin, which gives us the values on the y-axis of our oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. Next, I want to briefly walk you through the experimental steps of how we're going to construct the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve in the lab. Please note that I'm not going to go through every single detail of the procedure. Before the lab, you should read through the experiment in Lab Tutor, and during the lab, you should be sure to follow the detailed step-by-step -step instructions that are given by Lab Tutor. In the lab, you'll be given a sample of oxygenated hemoglobin at ambient air pressure, which is 760 millimeters of mercury. You'll measure the absorbance of that sample at 660 nanometers. And then you'll reduce the air pressure, which also reduces the partial pressure of oxygen in the sample incrementally. And to do this, you'll use a vacuum manometer. And again, you'll measure the absorbance after each reduction in pressure. And finally, you'll completely deoxygenate the sample by using a chemical to deplete oxygen. And again, you'll measure the absorbance. And then using the absorbance data that you just obtained, you'll calculate the percent saturation of hemoglobin at each step in the experiment. And you'll use these numbers to construct an oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve for the sample. You'll carry out this experiment in a flask that looks something like this. You can see that this flask has a side arm cuvette. And you may see this type of flask described by a few different names, and Lab Tutor refers to it as a tonometer. And you'll keep this flask tightly sealed with a rubber stopper to prevent the leakage of air into or out of the flask. At each pressure point, you'll gently swirl the sample in the flask to equilibrate the oxygen hemoglobin binding. And when you're ready to read the absorbance of the sample on the spectrophotometer, you'll tip the flask so that the sample flows into the sidearm cuvette. So the sample will flow down here into the cuvette. And then you'll insert the cuvette into the spectrophotometer.
Now keep in mind that with the sample cuvette attached to a flask, you won't be able to completely close the door of the spectrophotometer. So be sure to cover it with a dark cloth to prevent the incident light from shining on the sample. Now let's talk a little bit more specifically about the experimental protocol. You'll be provided with a hemoglobin sample that's at ambient air pressure, which is 760 millimeters of mercury, and room temperature. And this sample is considered to be oxygenated. You will briefly and gently agitate the sample and then read the absorbance at 660 nanometers on the spectrophotometer. And in the hemoglobin saturation calculation that you're given in Lab Tutor, this absorbance value is C. And the C term in the equation is the absorbance of the fully oxygenated hemoglobin. Next, you're going to reduce the air pressure in the flask, and that leads to a decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen. And you'll do this using the vacuum manometer. You'll then gently agitate this sample for about a minute, and that increases the exposure of the hemoglobin to the reduced pressure of oxygen and allows it to reach equilibrium. And again, you're going to read the absorbance at 660 nanometers, and in our saturation equation, this absorbance value is B. And you'll repeat this step several times, each time decreasing the air pressure in the flask by a specific increment. And again, the absorbance of the sample after each pressure reduction is going to be the letter B in our saturation equation. Now it's impossible to completely deoxygenate the hemoglobin sample using this method. So to completely deoxygenate the hemoglobin, you can add sodium hydrosulfite. Sodium hydrosulfite will deplete the sample of oxygen to a level that's not achievable with the vacuum apparatus that we have in the lab. So this sample is deoxygenated. And again, you'll read the absorbance of this sample on the spectrophotometer at 660 nanometers. And in the saturation equation, this absorbance value is A. A is the absorbance of completely deoxygenated hemoglobin. In addition to constructing a normal dissociation curve, You'll also investigate how that curve will be affected by a few experimental treatments that mimic physiologic conditions. Every group will test a control sample at room temperature and at a pH of 7.4. And your group will be assigned one or more of these experimental test conditions. First, cold temperature. And in this case, you must keep the flask in a cold water bath throughout the experiment. Next, a hemoglobin sample for which the pH has been adjusted to be lower than 7.4. And in the third condition, hemoglobin has been stripped of BPG. And again, you'll recognize these as some of the same factors that we mentioned in the previous tutorial as factors that can change the affinity of binding between hemoglobin and oxygen. And this slide shows some experimental tips and safety issues for this lab. Handle the samples gently and be careful not to introduce bubbles into the flask. Bubbles in the sample will affect your measurements on the spectrophotometer. Keep the flask tightly sealed to prevent air from leaking into or out of the flask. Always wipe off the outside of the sample cuvettes before you place them in the spectrophotometer. And when you're finished with the experiment, rinse the flask using water only and leave it on the side to dry. Absolutely do not use soap to clean the flasks, as this can leave a film. The flask should be clean and dry for the students in the later labs to use. If you have any questions about this tutorial,
Please feel free to ask your lab instructor during the lab or to contact us through the discussion board.